One of the worst parts about being a carpenter just became one of the best parts about being a magic player. Don't run and get the tweezers. Slivers are more fun than those tiny but painful things you seem to get all the time as a child. They're also one of the coolest tribes in Magic and one of the most fun modern decks to play. Slivers is a creature-based aggressive deck that wins by amassing a critical amount of slivers, almost all of which give each other bonuses. They're like a really nice employer around the holidays. Some give all slivers plus one plus one, some grant flying, and some hand out vigilance, among other abilities. If you're able to stick enough slivers that boost each other up, pretty soon your opponent won't be able to deal with a team of massive vigilant flying creatures that can destroy anything for three mana, and they will high five you as they lose the game, unable to be salty due to the pure awesomeness of your deck. Despite being creature based, this deck is also resilient to removal through cards like Sedge Sliver that grant your slivers reanimation, or board wipes with lands like the amazing Sliver Hive that churns slivers out of nowhere. Another plus is that you get to play not one, not two, not three, not four, but all five colors with this deck thanks to the fixing that cards like Mana Whiff Sliver give you. The potential downsides are that this deck has never been what we call a tier one strategy, meaning it's not one of the absolute best decks in modern. But that's okay, it can still hold its own in a tournament, and it's insanely fun to play. Another knock against it is that the sideboard can't be very deep due to the fact that we mostly can only run slivers and nothing but slivers in the deck and the board due to strict mana requirements that will become obvious later on in this video. Let's start with the only cards in your deck that aren't slivers or lands. Why? Because both of them let you play more slivers than you normally would be able to. And the more slivers, the merrier. First up is Aether Vial. If you've ever played Merfolk, this card is pretty familiar to you. It's an artifact that lets you put creatures into play for free at instant speed based on the number of charge counters on it. It's critical in the deck for a number of reasons. One of those is that the deck only runs 19 lands, which is very low. Aether Vial allows you to keep hands with fewer lands and run fewer lands in your deck, which allows for more of that delicious creature goodness. It also doesn't care about colors of mana, and as previously mentioned, this deck is five colors, so being able to cast what you need when you need it regardless of color requirements is a big plus. The final awesome thing about Aether Vial is its ability to allow for ambushing your opponent. If you have a couple of slivers out on the battlefield, your opponent should think twice about attacking, since you could flash in a bonus granting sliver with Aether Vial, pumping your slivers up, or giving them a sweet ability like flying or first strike, destroying their hopes and dreams. The only other non-sliver card this deck runs is Collected Company. I know, I know, Collected Company is everywhere and it annoys me too. But the benefit in this deck cannot be overstated. Why? Because every creature in this deck costs three mana or less, meaning unless you hit a pile of six lands, which is extremely unlikely, Company will hit and it will hit big. Once again, this is also done at instant speed, making combat a potential nightmare for your opponent. There's also a high chance they won't even see it coming, as you can be totally tapped out and still play it in this deck. How? Mana dorks. That's how. Hey mana dork, if you love mana so much, why don't you marry it? Maybe I will! Mana dorks are tiny creatures that can create mana. In this deck, our dorks are slightly better than most because they can help create tons of mana of any color. Mana Web Sliver is the key here, allowing you to tap any of your slivers to create any color of mana. This, along with Aether Vial, is how, other than our lands, we make five colors work. Gemhide Sliver is our other little friend that helps us with this task. These two creatures are vital parts of the engine of this deck, so don't underestimate having them in your opening hand. Not only do they help you cast your creatures, they help you cast more than one or two creatures a turn. Remember how I said each of these slivers are great at giving each other sweet bonuses? Now it's time to take a look at what exactly those bonuses are. Gale Rider Sliver is one of two one drops in the deck and grants flying. Striking Sliver is the other and grants, wait for it, first strike. Blur Sliver is a handy little three drop that gives your little friendos haste. Sentinel Sliver grants vigilance for two mana. Sinew Sliver gives all slivers plus one plus one. And Predatory Sliver gives all slivers you control plus one plus one. These are two slightly different abilities. Here's a little sliver of history for you. 
Way back in 1997, when slivers were first discovered on the plain of Rap, they worked differently to modern slivers. They gave all slivers an ability, not only the ones you controlled, but every sliver on the battlefield. Fast forward to M14, when slivers made a comeback. But this time, they only gave bonuses to slivers you controlled. Why? Historians aren't exactly sure, but probably because Wizards of the Coast decided the old way was too confusing, and they were probably right. Keep this in mind if, in an extremely rare and Instagram-worthy event, you find yourself playing against another Slivers player. Diffuse in Sliver is a bit of a weird one because it doesn't start with all Slivers have or Sliver creatures you control get, but it does give all of your little buddies a pretty big benefit. It's a 1-1 for 2 mana that lets your Slivers sneak around kill spells or activated abilities from your opponent by countering them unless they pay 2 generic mana. This is really handy in an environment like Modern that is always trying to kill creatures for cheap. Speaking of getting around kill spells, let's not forget Sedge Sliver. This dude is great because he, or she, or it, not really sure there, gives your slivers the ability to regenerate. All you have to do is pay one black mana and boom, invincible attackers, or blockers. But honestly, why are you even blocking? The final sliver in our main deck is Necrotic Sliver. This card really gives our creature deck reach by turning our army into killing machines by giving them a nasty activated ability. All you have to do is pay three and sacrifice a sliver to destroy any permanent your opponent is using to make your life annoying. And later on in the game, your slivers do actually get redundant, so sacrificing one isn't the worst thing in the world. While the slivers are the centerpiece of this deck, we can't forget what really brings it together and makes it tick, the lands. Cavern of Souls is a card you're probably familiar with if you've ever played any modern. It gives you any color of mana to cast your spells of a chosen creature type. In this case, survey says slivers. Those spells also can't be countered, so get bent cryptic command. Mutavolt is a land that, get this, is also a sliver. It taps to add one generic mana to your mana pool, but it can also be activated for one and turned into a 2-2 creature land that is all creature types until the end of turn. And when we say all creature types, we mostly mean sliver. The most important land of all, and arguably the most important card in the deck, is this land, Sliver Hive. It works like a little cavern of souls in that it can tap to add mana of any color to your mana pool if you're casting a sliver. However, it can also do something mega super important, and that's make more slivers. You can pay five and tap it to make one one colorless sliver creature token. Keep in mind you can only activate this if you have a sliver in play. This is extremely important because it allows you to keep pumping out slivers even after your hand has run out of gas, something that's often a problem in creature-based decks with no card draw. Rounding out our lands are cards that make us green, black, and blue mana in the likes of Overgrown Tomb, Watery Grave, Verdant Catacombs, and a Forest and a Swamp. Why those colors of mana? We need green to cast our mana dorks, which are important if we want to start making red or white mana or just plain ramping into collected company, which also requires green. We need black to help with Sedge Sliver's regeneration ability. And we need blue because Division Sliver is very important, as is Gale Rider Sliver, who can come down early as a one drop. I'll point out here that some decks do run a one of Godless Shrine. Now for the sideboard. And my lecture that sideboards are very metagame dependent. That means you need to tune them for the tournament you're playing right before you go and play to respond to what other decks are being played in the format. At least that's what I usually say. That's not really the case for slivers because we really can't play much of anything in our sideboard that isn't a sliver due to our strict mana requirements other than colorless spells. So good news, metagaming is for punks. I run a one of Bone Scythe Sliver, which grants your slivers trouble strike. Want to finish off your opponent quickly? Bring this fool in. A little pricey at four mana. Telekinetic Sliver slows your opponent down by tapping their stuff. Mind Lash Sliver rips cards out of your opponent's hand. Siphon Sliver grants lifelink to help defeat Burn, Valkit, or any deck that's trying to win by forcing a lot of direct damage. Homing Sliver is an interesting tool that turns your slivers into cyclers that allow you to search out specific slivers and put them into your hand. This is useful to bring in if you need specific slivers to defeat the enemy. Frenetic Sliver helps defeat removal. Dark Heart Sliver grants you more life. Cautery Sliver helps you burn out the opponent. Dormant Sliver helps you draw cards. 
and then is surely sacrificed, and Harmonic Sliver helps you deal with cards like Blood Moon or decks like Affinity. Sliver Hive Lord is epic and designed to help you beat down versus decks that would have trouble dealing with an indestructible army. Likewise, Sliver Legion is also five colors and totally backbreaking if your opponent is trying to do anything remotely fair or mid-rangey. Some people also include Warping Whale out of the sideboard. So there you have it, an incredibly fun and funky modern deck. If you love smashing face and attacking with creatures, you're gonna love playing slivers. Just remember to bring your tweezers.